marketing the arts is largely about getting people to know about, care about, and actually participate in an arts experience. And if you're good at it, getting them to come back again and again. I'm Andrew Taylor. I'm on the Faculty of Arts Management at American University in Washington, D.C., and this is Arts Managed, a series of resources about arts management, what it is, how it works, how you can get better at it. In this video, we're exploring the world of arts marketing, which is one of the ten functions of arts management discussed in a different video. And while it can take decades of inquiry, experience, and experimentation to truly master arts marketing, we're going to focus today on a particularly useful piece of the puzzle. In short, we're going to talk about three categories of goods and services, the different challenges these categories present to the person making a decision, and therefore the different strategies you require as an arts marketer to engage those challenges. To cut to the chase, those three categories are search goods, experience goods, and credence goods. Before we dive into definitions, take a minute to think for yourself about how you look for and then decide upon things you're going to buy or things you're going to do. Sometimes you know exactly what you want and you're highly confident that you can determine the quality or utility of that good or service before you buy it. Sometimes it's more difficult to determine quality utility because there's a variety of options and each might connect with your own needs in a different way. And finally, there are goods and services that are difficult to determine in advance their quality or utility to what you want. And even after you experience it, you're not entirely sure whether or not it was good or useful. That, in a nutshell, is the difference between search goods, experience goods, and credence goods. And arts experiences can show up in all three of those categories. So let's talk about them one at a time. Search goods have a low cost to the consumer of determining quality or utility before you buy them. Think here about commodities like rice or flour or gasoline for your car. You know exactly what you want, and you have a high level of certainty that whichever you pick will be useful to you in a predictable way. But then there are goods and services where it's more difficult to determine the quality or utility of the options available to you. It takes more effort for you to figure that out, and therefore there's a higher cost of determining quality and utility among your many options. These are what are called experience goods, because you can't actually know their utility or quality until you experience them, until you've tried them for yourself. Think here about hotel rooms or wine or restaurants that you haven't yet visited. Even if you've heard good things about them, you can't actually know whether they're going to be useful or beautiful to you until you've tried them yourself. And then there's a third category of goods and services where it's difficult to know in advance the quality and utility. And even after you experience it, it's difficult to know whether they were good or useful. Think here about things like multivitamins or trips to your auto mechanic or trips to your doctor where because of the nature of the service or the good, you can't really know without additional effort whether or not what you were given was good or useful. These are called credence goods because they require additional credence or additional information to really determine whether they were good or useful to what you had in mind. You need an additional expert, for example, or additional information or evidence to prove the point that this was the best choice to make. Think again about multivitamins. How would you know, without extensive additional research, whether one form of multivitamin was better than another in your own experience? So those are three categories of goods and services. There's search, which has a low cost for the consumer to determine quality and utility. There's experience, which has a higher cost for the consumer to determine quality and utility. But after they experience it, they know pretty well whether it was good or useful. And then there's credence goods, which have a high cost to determine quality and utility in advance, and a high cost after the experience even to determine quality and utility. An arts marketing maven friend of mine, Neil archer taught me a while ago that arts marketing was really about managing evidence. And you can see in the case of these three categories of goods, you need different kinds of evidence and different levels of engagement to help a consumer or audience member think about and choose you. Pretty much all arts experiences could be considered at least experienced goods. That is, you can't know for sure whether something is useful or beautiful or quality until you experience it yourself. And therefore, you have to make a complex and difficult choice in advance of the purchase. So how does arts marketing come into play with an experienced good? Well, for one, you need lots of evidence that the experience is worth it, it is good, it is useful, it is beneficial to those who participate in it. And you do this through evidence of other people's experiences. So quotes and testimonials, those videos of people after a show being all excited and thrilled about what they just saw, critical reviews in the newspaper or online. These are all forms of evidence that you might manage as an arts marketer to help people understand that committing to your work is worth the risk. 
Obviously, this can be difficult in many cases when you're presenting or producing a work for the very first time. How are you or anybody to have evidence about whether or not it's a good experience for the people who might come? This is here again why we might favor having stars in the lead or other indicators that this is a quality performance or production or work. We might reference the past work of the artist and how well it was received. We might need to use evidence that isn't about the current event or experience, but about the components that went into it or the pedigree of those who assembled it. And of course, digital technology and social media have provided a thousand new ways for people to share their experience and their evaluation of utility or beauty or quality so that others can learn from and make choices about what they're going to do next. Here you can see social media posts being really important, or online rating systems like Google or Hotels.com or Yelp. Any platform that gathers or aggregates or ranks and rates other people's experience becomes really important to this work. But let's also consider the arts as a possible credence good. And I'm sure you can all think of a time when you attended an arts event or had an arts experience and you weren't even sure after the fact whether it was good or useful or quality or beautiful. It was either entirely new to you or you had no basis to compare it or you had no way after the fact of knowing whether this was the best choice of your many options for how to spend your money, attention, and time. Here again, in the search process, any consumer would benefit from other people's experiences, whether professional critics or people like them or word of mouth from friends and family. But even after the fact, you have opportunity to inform and influence the way they considered the experience. You can change their mind or push them toward the positive or negative in how you talk about and share back what their experience was with them. Here's why particularly smart arts marketers don't stop doing their work once the ticket is purchased or the event is attended. Even after that fact, you have an opportunity to inform and, and animate and elaborate someone's experience, and they're still deciding whether or not it was worth it for them. So as you plan and produce your marketing activities for a particular event or even for a whole season of events, it's really worth thinking about whether what you're providing is a search good, an experience good, or a credence good, and whether that might be different among many different kinds of attendees that you hope to attract to the work. Some participants might consider what you do a search good because they have high confidence and high certainty that the artist or the work or the effort is something they know and they've seen before, and they're pretty sure it's going to give them what they're looking for. Others might need a little bit more information in advance to understand whether and why this particular choice among all the other possible choices is really the one they should choose. And then still others, even after they've experienced it, will need more evidence or reinforcement or encouragement or connection to understand and decide for themselves whether what they experienced was really worth their time. And across all of these categories of possible goods and services, whether search or experience or credence, it's also important to consider what kinds of outcomes or values people are looking for in the work itself and what a wide variety of outcomes they might be seeking. For example, people might be coming for the artwork itself or they might care about the people who are making the work or are supporting the work as it is created. Or they might be looking for a social experience, something they can share with people they care about and talk about afterwards. Any of these may be the reason they're attending the event, and therefore any of these may be the ways they measure success or quality or utility or benefit. Marketing expert Theodore Levitt once said, people don't want to buy a quarter inch drill, they want a quarter inch hole. So it's worth thinking as an arts marketer, what is the outcome that people have in mind when they attend or consider or search for or evaluate your arts experience? Of course, there are a million reasons people might come or not come to experience your work. But I hope this framework gives you a way to usefully sort those million possibilities into three categories of consideration, search, experience, and credence.